Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at fuel planning in a little bit of detail. Now the form you're probably looking at is uh, familiar to all flight navigators everywhere and this is basically what you'd be using in order to go ahead and determine that the aircraft that you're flying is going to have enough fuel to actually get you to your destination. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working out a complete performance profile, calculating our fuel requirements, putting it all together and then going ahead and filling out part of this form. I'm not going to be filling out this entire piece here because again we're not navigating you know across the ocean or anything like that. So I'm going to kind of leave some of this stuff alone. But again, this is a great way to kind of plan what you're doing. So let's go ahead and kick it off. So we're going to be using the Cessna 172S for my example here. This is actually the SP if you want to take a look. I provided a link to this, by the way, in the description below for those of you who want to experiment with this. This aircraft closely matches the performance of the Cessna that's in Flight Simulator especially. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go ahead and create a flight, calculate how much fuel we're going to use for that flight, and then estimate how much fuel as well as how much time we're going to have at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my good old-fashioned friend uh, little nav map going. All right, let's go ahead and plan a flight here. Now we're going to keep it pretty simple. We're going to stick to the Cessna 172 because we're not going to do anything too complicated here. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to come up here in uh, New Hampshire and we're going to go ahead and say, we'll go start from Keene, so this is our departure point. And we'll go ahead and say that we're traveling all the way down to, well, let's make this a pretty significant flight here. We'll do HPN, which is a Westchester County, all the way down here. So the nice thing about Little Nav Map is if you have programmed the recent performance files and actually designed these, like I can go right to Cessna 172, and it'll actually do all of the hard work for us. But uh, the reason that we're going through this is just so you can kind of see what it looks like on both sides of the actual fight here. So uh, now that we have our total distance, we know that we're traveling 127 nautical miles. Now that's going to be pretty important for us. We're also going to have some pretty good ideas as far as times, as well as uh, usable fuels and stuff like that. Again, we're going to be doing 50 gallons. So let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do here. So when we start, uh, we have a total of 50 gallons of fuel on board. So the first thing we're going to have to calculate is we're going to have to calculate how much fuel we're going to use during our takeoff. Our takeoff fuel weight, by the way, would be 300 pounds. Um, obviously, um, actually, I'm sorry, this is takeoff fuel weight. This will never change. We'll keep everything in pounds. Uh, we'll keep everything in gallons. What am I saying? Just to keep things a little bit simpler for us today. So say 50, 50, 50, 50. Now, if you're wondering why the takeoff fuel weight stays the same no matter where you are in this document, it's on account of the fact that your fuel weight um, for takeoff only changes if you have to take off twice. Let's say you have to do two legs on a flight. That's why this takeoff fuel weight would change. Uh, fuel consumed, obviously at takeoff, uh, there's going to be a minimum amount. A lot of times what people do is uh, they'll toss that particular fuel amount down here, and then they'll bring it over onto this side of things. Again, it's up to you as far as how you want to do that. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate what our en route fuel is going to be. But we can't do that because we don't know how much time we're going to be spending en route. Kind of see how that gets a little bit tricky. But what we do know is we know how much our taxi as well as our run-up fuel is going to be. Um, the Cessna 172 says it uses 1.1 gallons of a total fuel for that purpose. So we know that when we do take off, my fuel weight is not going to be 50 gallons. It's going to be 48.9 because that's going to be what we have at that particular point. So my actual ramp fuel in this particular point, again, if you want to work this way on this, you can. But like I said, I almost find it to be easier to work backwards. Required ramp, I'm just going to go ahead and say 50. So it makes it pretty darn easy. So now we know that my initial fuel here is going to be starting, like I said, right there at this particular point. We're going to be starting at 48.1, or 48.9 rather. And again, the reason I'm getting that particular value is on account of the fact that we're subtracting our taxi and run-up against a required ramp. So in this particular case, our takeoff fuel weight is, like I said, is actually going to be that 48.9. Now, that's a tricky little thing, so you got to kind of watch out for that. As you start moving on to airliners, this number is way less than what your actual ramp fuel will be, but that's good enough for us. So time remaining, so we need to figure out what 48.9 pounds of or gallons of fuel is going to get us as far as time remaining goes. So let's go ahead and pop over here real quick. Let's go ahead and uh, poke all the way down to my en route section. I'm going to go ahead and cruise on down here. We're going to assume that we're traveling at 6,000 feet today and 75% power, and we're going to assume we're at standard temperature. So let's see here, about 77, that would be 10.4 gallons per hour. So 10.4 gallons per hour, I'm just going to get on our handy-dandy little calculator here. Let's go ahead. So we know we're 48.9 divided by 10.4 gives us four hours, 4.7. So 0 0.7 times 60 be four hours and 42 minutes of a total flight time here, which isn't too bad. So usually that's going to be written as a four plus whatever the remaining minute time is. And this is the most common method that they'll use for it. So we have four hours and 42 minutes of fuel at cruise power 
at our disposal. Now that's important because again, this is going to be our time remaining over here. So let's go ahead now and calculate our climb. So we said we we're gonna be climbing up to 6,000 feet here. So now what we're gonna do is pop over to our time, distance, and fuel, and we're gonna see how long it takes to get from our sea level, which is actually keen is about 1,000 feet. So we're actually gonna be going from 1,000 to 6,000. So it's a 5,000 feet climb. So we have to actually take our 6,000 number and subtract them from the sea level calculations or the 1,000 calculations. Ugh, I hate that. Let's go ahead and do it to it. So uh, first things first here, I noticed that our total time is going to be, to get to 6,000 feet, 10 minutes. 10 minutes minus one is going to be nine minutes of climb time. So I'm gonna come in here, that's going to be a nine minutes total time. So let's see, that's going to be nine. I'm gonna do plus nine, so it's a very easy. Accumulated time at this point is going to be nine. So now fuel remaining, we now have to do a calculation for fuel. So we're now gonna take our fuel amount, which is like we said right here, 6,000, 2.2 minus 0.4. We'll just do that real quickly. We can see is 1.8 gallons of fuel consumed. So we'll just write 1.8 right here. And we know our fuel remaining now is going to equal 48.9, which is what we started at takeoff, minus, minus our 1.8. So now we know we have 47.1 gallons of fuel at the top of our cruise. So now what we do is we uh, recalculate what we have as far as our fuel time remaining goes. So in this case, like we said, we're using 10.1 gallons per hour. We know we have four hours, uh, 0 0.66 times 60 is 39.6. So we do four plus 39, and that would be our remaining fuel so far. We have four hours and 39 minutes of fuel when we get to the top of our climb. Not bad. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do our cruise. Now, usually you break cruise into multiple parts. Now, the reason you do that is because we have this nasty thing called wind. So if you take a look back at our little, oh, look how many calculators I have going. Now, that is not uncommon, by the way. You should see how bad my aviation calculator looks these days. If I poke over here, usually what you're going to do is you're going to split this flight into multiple halves, in which case we've got 127 nautical miles. So if we assume that we want to go ahead and split this one right down in the middle, I could come right in here. I could go ahead and add this position and just use this as my divider, which gets me a fairly you know, modest 62 on this side. So what I could do is on this bit, I could calculate what my total wind effect is and then calculate what my total wind effect is here. Because again, we're gonna be interested in how long it takes to travel that distance. And again, calculating the effects of wind are gonna be a little bit complicated. But one of the things I do have here, which makes your life a little bit simpler, is if you come over here, this is a nice little tool that can actually help determine the effect of different wind that you have on your particular aircraft. You know, we can dial in our wind direction, we can dial in a wind speed, this is all fairly complicated calculation. Um, I have done it before, but we'll take a look at that later. But again, we just want to look at fuel planning for today. So let's assume we've done a 62 and a 65 nautical mile slice here. So I'm just going to come over here. We'll go ahead and calculate our speeds here. Where's our distance in time? I'll do 62. Our cruise speed, I'll go back over to our document. We calculated it to be 6,000 feet. And at standard temperature is a 122 knots. So I'm going to type in 122. That's going to get us uh, 30.49 minutes. So that's going to be my first leg. I'm just going to go over here. That's going to be uh, 30.49. So it's 30.5. So if you add up 9 and 30.5 equals this plus the previous, it's going to get 39 and a half. Now, the neat thing is you can actually just do the subtraction here. So we could actually say here that we, we'd expect to be at three hours and uh, 59 minutes and 30 seconds worth of fuel. But we'll actually go through the calculation real quick to make sure this actually makes sense. Again, everything should equal everything when you're done. So we're burning 10.4 gallons an hour. Let's go over here. Uh, let's see, 10.4 gallons per hour. Oop, 10.4. And our total travel time, like we just said a minute ago, was, I think I have it still on the sheet, uh, 0 0.508, 0 0.508, which means we expect to burn 5.3 total gallons. So 5.3, remember this is total fuel consumed. So we do uh, 5.3, which means we'd have now this minus this, which would give us 41.8 pounds. Now, like I said, we've been traveling for an extra 39.5 minutes. So like I said, if you want to do the subtraction, you can take a 39. So basically you're going to end up with a three plus 59 is what you're going to end up with as far as fuel remaining goes. So now we'll take our second half of the cruise, which as you recall was a 65 nautical miles. So I'm going to go over here. We'll just go ahead and change our numbers real fast. So that's going to be 53, 0.5327. That's going to be 5.54 gallons of gas. And it's going to take us a total of 32 minutes. So we're all 32 minutes. So I'm just going to take this, add this to this. Boop. This gives me 71.5 overall. We know that we've consumed, just going right back. I always like to round up a little bit here. Uh, five point, I want to call that 5.3. 
5.3 again, so we can just do the math. Control C, Control V. That's going to leave me with 36.5 gallons of fuel here. Now all we have to do here is uh, do our quick subtraction. 59 minus 32 would be 27, so we do 3 plus 27. Now I've got 20, 3 hours and 27 minutes worth of fuel remaining for this leg of my cruise. Now the interesting thing here is uh, we're pretty much done. Now you're saying, whoa, 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 what about descent? Well, the reality is, is we assumed this whole chunk of time, uh, at some point we're going to descend basically at our cruise power all the way down to our destination. Now, the downside is that's going to mess up our time, meaning we're actually going to be landing with more fuel than we expected. Now, that's where the integration and that's where the flight planning comes in. But again, that's a discussion for another day. So doing all of our math real quickly right here, we're able to see that our total time is going to end up being about 72 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, we're expected to have about three hours and 27 minutes worth of fuel on board. We're expected to have about 36.5 gallons total. Now, if you want to cross-reference that to make sure you're okay, you could actually go back and check it now. Now what I do is I come back over here. We do my little idiot check here. So my en route fuel is a 5.3 times 2. So that's going to be a 10.6 gallons total. Um, reserve, of course, uh, we're going to have a tremendously large reserve, assuming you took off with all 50 gallons, in which case our reserve here is a staggering 36.5 five gallons. So if I do 36.5, now if I add these two together, I'll go ahead and make sure this is set up so that you can just kind of push the numbers in here. That's going to give us a staggering 47.1 pounds. Now, um, anybody who's a very, very perceptive here will instantaneously go, um, we've got a problem though. Um, what happened to the climb fuel that we included in here? See how we had that uh, 4.9 difference? Usually when you do your climb fuel, you're going to include that within your en route fuel. And again, we're assuming you're using a reserve of, like I said, a staggering 36.5 gallons. Let's say you only wanted to do a 10 pound reserve, which means my on right purse on route plus my reserve is 20.6 gallons. Uh, let's say that we didn't do an holding. Let's say we didn't do approach to landing. Usually an approach to landing, you want to add in another couple gallons, again, depending. If you have any unidentified extra or anything like that, you'd have to worry about that. Now we can do our calculations. So now I'm going to go ahead and do it real quick. We're going to do 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus seven, enter, means we need 22 point gallons of fuel for our actual flight here. So now we just come down here and we'd go ahead and add in our taxi and run up of 1.1. So we just go ahead and boop, boop, and ta-da, there would be our total amount of fuel we would require for this flight. Keep in mind, this is only a 10 gallon reserve. Granted, a 10 gallon reserve is enough to take this entire flight again. If you wanted a much, much smaller reserve, you could go ahead and do that. Now let's say that we're expecting to go ahead and need to do some holding here. So what we could do is we could come in here and say, I'm expecting to do eight minutes worth of holding. You know, eight minutes worth of holding at, let's say eight gallons per hour. That's uh, eight, you'd basically say eight into uh, 60 times eight. So it'd be about basically a gallon of fuel for about eight minutes of holding there. You could dial that in and you could instantly notice that your required ramp fuel is going to be 24.7. Now, let me show you something kind of interesting here. If we go back over here into this, now this aircraft actually, I did a performance file for the Cessna 172. It's very interesting to notice that our total time for distance and time here was one hour and nine minutes. Uh, we calculated a little bit longer than that. We actually calculated one hour. Again, you can notice that this a little extra time in here because our cruise was a lot slower than what their cruise was. So I'm actually their climb rather. The other thing that's worth noting here is if you go down the little trip fuel, you'll notice they're asking us to carry 10 gallons of fuel, but a block fuel of 16 because they're like, hey, you know, you got to watch out for that. That number is quite a bit different than ours because our reserve is so much bigger than what they're using. In this case, um, their particular uh, reserve, if we actually go up into their aircraft performance real quick, I'll go ahead and call that up. You'll notice the taxi fuel is eight pounds. The reserve fuel is 27 pounds of fuel. So if we actually use their total reserve, so 27 divided by six, you'll notice it gets us four and a half gallons, which puts us almost exactly, exactly with the expected amount of fuel, except we did a better job calculating the climb. So hopefully this helps as far as uh, doing fuel planning. Um, one quick thing, as I always like to say at the end, if you want to save yourself a little bit of time, there's something called SimFuel. Uh, if you dial this thing in here, it's, uh, it's there's a great website here that will actually help you out. Actually, we can show you the right one first. Sorry about that. I goofed that up the first time. There's this thing called Fuel Planner, which uh, is absolutely awesome. You can literally come in here and say, ooh, I want to fly a Cessna Citation, and I want to go from JFK to, uh, we'll do uh, Dallas-Fort Worth. And I can go ahead and say load sheet, and whoosh, 
it'll automatically calculate all your fuel for you based on what they know about flight simulator aircraft. And again, it'll tell you all sorts of time to empty. It'll give you a cost index if you need it. And it generates all this stuff instantly. Now, if I want to do this in a 737, for example, just come in here, boop, I can push the planner button and whoosh, it'll do all your fuel calculations for you. Now, let's go one step further than that. There's also this website called POH Performance. What this does, this is actually amazing. So watch this. I could come in here and say uh, Cessna 172 Performance. Uh, I could go ahead and say I want to use the web browser. It's going to send you this really, really angry email saying you have to realize that you know if something goes wrong, it's your fault because uh, you didn't do it properly. But literally, watch this. We could come in here, edit our default aircraft. Let's go ahead and add in an aircraft. We'll do a Cessna 172S. I'm going to say all this stuff is fine. We're going to assume we're carrying, uh, sometimes you can do change out the fuel. Nope, not going to worry about that. You can even change out the weight. I'm going to press done. You can come up to trip real quick. I can say edit. I can press OK, press new, uh, copy settings. Sure, that's fine. Now I can say, oh, we're going from keen all the way to, we said HPN, I believe. Our cruise altitude is going to be 6,000 feet. Uh, override automatic distance. Notice it calculates it, assuming we're IFR here. Uh, we've got a required fuel. Now, let's say we're carrying a 50 gallons here, just like we said we could. Notice our required fuel is basically almost exactly what we corrected it to be. So now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna press the done button. Take a look at this. So what this now is going to do is it's going to give you all the information you need about departure. It's gonna tell you what runway to use. It's gonna tell you how high you need to go. It's gonna tell you what your rotation speed is going to be. It's even going to tell you what you're gonna be using as far as takeoff rate of climb, what your VX is, what your VY is. It's also going to, whoops, I hate it when I do that. It's also gonna give you your en route information. It's gonna tell you what power setting you need to use. Notice there's our 10.2, surprise. And it even gives you information about your destination, such as what our different speeds are going to be when we get there, what the best runway you want to use, what our altimeter is, how much fuel we're going to be landing with, all pretty much instant Instantaneously. Now, I still like doing things the old-fashioned way. Now, if we ever get some older airliners inside of a flight simulator, you know, we're going to have to do things the hard way. But at the same time, is these are great tools. Again, you can just Google literally Fuel Planner, go to that one. Performance. Uh, there's also SimBrief that'll calculate for you. And there's also some very, very powerful tools such as EFAST, which will do your fuel planning for you. All right. I'm going to leave you with this tool. Um, again, if you want this one, just go file, make a copy. Don't just like try to ask me permission for it because I won't give it to you. There's actually two parts to the sheet. We're going to need this second half of this for a little bit later. Enjoy.